Welcome back to another game recap of the Detroit Seminoles. I'm your host, Marcus Burns. What a finish the Seminoles put on the Vipers in last week's game. The Knolls struggled some in the first half, but came on strong in the second, and made up for the three losses they've started out with 2015 with. Let's get to the highlights and see how the action really got in hand. Lined up at the 10-yard line, they threw an 8-yard pass to the right receiver for the touchdown. They decided to go for the two-point conversion by trying to pass the ball, but that was run down by the Seminole players to end the attempt. On the kickoff, the return man bobbled the ball and it fell just inside the goal line. He picks it up and attempts to run out of the end zone and is quickly stopped. In the second quarter, with the Vipers punting the ball from the Knowles 35-yard line, with the Knowles calling fair catch and letting it go, the ball rests again on the one-yard line where the Knowles will have to start their drive. With the Knowles deep in their own zone, they hand it off, and off to the races goes the running back, and runs out of bounds at the 50-yard line. With the Knowles at the 50, they give up a sack on the quarterback. With the Knowles not being able to move forward, they have to punt the ball, while on the Vipers team, the receiver loses the ball by hitting him on the helmet and bouncing forward. A mad scramble for the ball makes it a Seminoles ball on the recovery. While the Knowles march down the field and get into scoring position, the quarterback calls his own number and takes it in for the touchdown. The extra point is good, making the score 7-6 Seminoles. During the last minutes of the second quarter, the Vipers are driving down the field with a 10-yard pass and quickly downing the ball to stop the clock. Lined up at the 25-yard line, they pass again at the 15-yard line for a catch, while falling out of bounds for another first down. While on the 15-yard line, they attempt to score with a deep pass to the back corner, while the man-to-man -man coverage was no match for the interception in the back of the end zone. With the Knowles on the 20-yard line, they hand it off to the running back and gets good yardage, but as he comes close to the defenders, he laterals the ball to one of his teammates and then gets tackled in the third quarter, the Knowles have a drive from the Vipers 45-yard line. They do some trickery with a triple reverse and get 25 yards out of the play. While on the same drive, the quarterback again calls his own number and safely trots in for the touchdown, making the score Knowles 13, Vipers 6. The extra point is good, making the score Knowles 14, Vipers 6. The Vipers are about midfield, Go for a pass play at the 15-yard line. On the same drive, the Vipers throw the ball between two defenders for the touchdown. The two-point conversion was good. The score tied at 14. During one of the plays in the third quarter, from midfield, the Knowles throw a deep pass, but the receiver could not wrap his hands around it, and by dropping the ball. During another chance, the Knowles fumble the ball, and the QB tries to fall on the ball, and it squirts out from him, while the Viper player pounces all on it. In the fourth quarter, the Vipers try a deep ball themselves from the Knowles 30-yard line, just to be intercepted, but a defensive interference gives the ball back to the Vipers. With the ball on the two-yard line, the QB again sneaks it into the end zone for a touchdown, making the score Vipers 20, Seminoles 14. With the onsetting point after, the Vipers try for a two, and the catch is thrown out of bounds. With the Vipers kicking off, the Knowles caught it at the 18-yard line, and then was dragged down near the Vipers 40-yard line. The Knowles' attempt to pass the ball was nearly intercepted. The Knowles are in a shotgun formation and throws it deep into the end zone, but it was intercepted by the Vipers. After a four and out, the Knowles in the shotgun formation again try to throw the ball downfield. The ball is nearly intercepted again by the Vipers, but the ball hits the ground and making it the Knowles' ball. Knowles and shotgun. They throw the ball and it is caught for a Knowles first down. With the Knowles driving downfield, now at the 20-yard line, the QB tosses the ball and it is caught at the 15-yard line, 
Now open, he makes a dash for the goal line, but is tripped up near the five-yard line. First down. The Knolls line up and hand it off to the running back, who then drives his way into the end zone. Touchdown, Knolls. The extra point is no good, making the score tied at 20. The Vipers get a chance with minutes left in the game, with a pass to an open receiver, who then drops the pass. The Vipers have to punt on fourth down and kicks it. The Knolls bobble the catch, and now it's a free ball, but the Knolls got lucky in recovering it. The Knolls have the ball on the 30, hands it off to the running back, and he takes off downfield. Finally pushed out of bounds at the 30-yard line, but a penalty make takes it back to the 40-yard line. In shotgun formation, the ball is passed up the field to a waiting receiver, who then steps out of bounds to stop the clock. With the ball on the 15-yard line, the running back runs into a brick wall. With the ball on the 5-yard line, the running back then takes the ball wide into the end zone to end the game. The score, Seminoles 26, Vipers 20. After the game, I spoke with Coach Moose, and I asked him what changed the second half. We had no choice. You know, like the, 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 the offensive setups they was in made us change our defense into a, a, a five front. And the, the defense they was running, which I always call the junk defense, our offense overpowered their defense the second half, as you notice. Uh, penalties killed us hard today. Penalties killed us real hard. I asked myself, are we this bad or we was just, you know, being picked on by the refs today. I hate to say it like that, but it seemed that way. I mean, we got 19 penalties in a game, you know. We had, um, what, four crucial penalties. Uh, besides that, uh, I think our guys played a pretty good game. We just got to work on a few things, you know. Going into the season next week, we're just going to have to play harder than what we played today. I mean, we played hard, but we got to play harder. And uh, some guys, you know, uh, may be mad, but uh, they might not. Uh, they, some guys might not play. <laughs> Due to uh, the way they play, they got to work on their job, but they're going to lose their job. Somebody's going to come take it from them. We got guys up and coming, and we got a young team. It may look like the same old single team, but it's not. This team is very young. A uh, few veterans here and there, but it's very young. And guys got to, you know, group together. I also spoke with Calvin Brown, and I asked him, what's the plan for next week? The toughest part is always overcoming the loss, you know what I'm saying? Or feeling like you're down on a penalty game. Penalties always kill a drive, you know, so we went through a lot of penalties, a lot of uprise. At the end of the day, we focused, we got the stops that we needed, held them out, didn't allow no field goals, scored on offense, and came out with the win. I spoke with Daryl Green, and I asked him what was the toughest part of the game. The toughest part of today's game was getting started, you know, like you got guys, like some guys showed up late, you know, like we weren't all on the same accord yet, you know, like we just like took a little bit of time of building our momentum and getting our cohesion. Our first possession, we had about five penalties. We, we wasn't mentally ready yet. I spoke with Artez Baker and I asked him what was the plan of attack. Well, first of all, you know, we're going to have to get on our track shoes. Those guys like to spread us out, and they like to run, and they like to go up and down the field. You know, they average about anywhere from 25 to 30 points, so we're going to all have to be mentally ready. Coach Hop, which is the defensive coordinator, going to have a good game plan with that. We're going to execute it. We're going to work on our practice uh, Tuesday and Thursday, and we're going to go from there. I spoke with Coach Hunt, and this is what he had to say about the game. Uh, well, I know one thing. We need to improve... Uh, in several areas, uh, we need to do a better job on execution. We need to protect the ball and not turn it over. Uh, we just need to be fundamentally sound, both uh, from an offensive standpoint, special teams, and defensively. So we got a lot of work to do. I spoke with Reggie Eubanks, and this is what he had to say to what can the team do better in voice only. I spoke with Coach Hopkins, and this is what he had to say. Uh, get more fundamentally sound. Um, talk to the players, of course, about how the, the actions impact us on the field, and hopefully we'll clean it up. Well, that's it for this session of the Game Recap with the Detroit Seminoles. Join us next week when we start league play against the Ravens. The game will be at Denby High School at 7 p.m. 
on the corners of Kelly and Morang. I'm Marcus Burns, and I'm your host, and we'll see you next week. Thanks for watching.